students these video lectures are made by me to facilitate your problems during the period of national lockdown now uh, your studies must go on it should not be disrupted by the closure of the university so i thought that i will provide you some video lectures it's quite difficult for me to uh, create the ambience of the class but i have tried my best to give you the feel of the classroom teaching the paper which i am dealing with you is indian english literature paper paper 3 of semester 4 the portion uh, which is assigned to me is the poetry part of this uh, paper and in my uh, first video lecture i gave an introductory lecture on jayant mahapatra very briefly i discussed the background of the poet his concept of the poetry the major awards received by him major collections written by him and also the important themes which have been discussed by him now three poems are prescribed in your course don at puri grandfather an indian summer so today i will uh, discuss the poem don at puri now this text is at the screen you will be able to see the text for your convenience you please have the text in your hand then uh, you can better understand uh the concept now uh before i uh start analyzing the poem i would like to tell you that uh this don at puri is one of the important poems of jain mahapatra in the poetry of jain mahapatra as i told you in my introductory lecture Orissa plays a very important uh, role, and the setting of this poem is Puri, the important religious place of Orissa. Now, uh, Puri, as all of you know, is considered a holy place, a sacred place, because of because the temple of god jagannath is situated here this place is particularly famous for uh, the chariot festival of jagannath an annual ritual conducted for the glory of this deity and this is attended by a large number of pilgrims in orissa this festival is also celebrated in different parts of the country now i have just told you that the, the city is a uh, a sacred place uh, a holy place but uh, when you read the poem there are so many layers which are uncovered by the poet so this poem is uh, superficially uh, the poem tries to show that the place is reverent but it also tries to show that uh, it's forlorn also and uh, the citizens of this place are uh, suffering uh, from uh, destitution hunger and joylessness now puri here uh, functions as a miniature metaphor of india 
you will have the picture of entire India here in, in, in the picture of you know, Puri. This poem is uh, uh, symbolic, metamorph, uh, metaphorical and imagist. There are so many images uh, which are taken by the poet in this poem. In this poem, uh, the poet uh, talks about the hollowness, the uselessness, the futility of the rites and rituals which are very common in Indian society. Now, this poem also evokes, there are so many issues actually, so many points which uh, the poet is raising here in this poem. The poem evokes a loss of identity, anonymity, death, disease, destitution, poverty, hunger, decadence and so many other points. This poem consists of six, six stanzas and each stanza has three lines. Now uh, let us uh, start the poem. If you have the text in your hand, so you'll be able to uh, understand the poem in a better way. Now, this is stanza one of uh, the poem. Endless crow noises, a skull in the holy sands, tilts its empty country towards hunger. Now, uh, as I told you, the setting of the poem is the coastal area of uh, Puri. Uh, the poet ruminates on the beach premises at Puri and uh, we have uh, actually the noise of the crows there at the beach. So the endless cawing of the crows catches the poet's attention at the beginning of the poem. Now, what does he find? Actually, he finds that numerous crows are making noise. Now, uh, just, you know, when you read the opening uh, stanza of this poem, then you find that, you know, cawing of the crows, endless crows, actually it is uh, making a very, you know, uh, it is giving unpleasant uh, sound. So the atmosphere of the poem in the very beginning becomes very dark, very bleaky. Uh, now, you see, uh, when we have endless crow noises, there are uh, endless uh, uh, noise of the crows, crows are cawing. A skull is also there in the holy sand. The word holy uh, is ironically used here. There is one skull which is lying in the sand of that place. Tilts its empty country towards hunger. And what are they indicating? They are indicating that the country is empty and it is moving towards hunger. Now if you look at the entire stanza, You'll find out that the uh, poet is focusing on the point that there is a dead body which is lying on the sand and these crows want to eat it. So uh, we have a very sad uh, uh, and elegiac tone from the very beginning. Now there is a skull in the holy sand as is there a skull in the holy sand. Now, uh, this skull uh, denotes, it is emblematic of, symbolic of 
the abject poverty of Puri. Puri has uh, many religious uh, connections and connotations, but you know this symbol actually denotes the abject poverty and destitution of this uh, place. Now again, this uh, skull, uh, as I told you that uh, the poem is an imagist uh, poem, there are so many uh, visual images which the poet is uh, 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 trying to create. Uh, now this skull uh, represents the hollowness of life and also the unavoidability of death, that death is inevitable. Now. Uh, I mean, uh, if you read these uh, three lines, then you will find out that uh, the poet is trying to show that this town of Puri uh, symbolizes uh, the entire country. It functions as a miniature metaphor of uh, India. Now, uh, when you read this uh, endless crow noises, now, uh, the poet, I mean, in this line, the poet is trying to create a visual as well as auditory image. I mean, when the word crow comes, visual image is created. But when the noise comes, auditory image comes. So, you know, a visual and auditory images the poet is trying to create in the first line. Now, uh, when, he, when he said a skull in the holy sands, Again, a very uh, startling uh, imagery. And here the poet is trying to juxtapose, to put together the abstract and the concrete. Skull, concrete, holy, abstract. So, you know, abstract and concrete are grouped together, juxtaposed here. Now, uh, when uh, the poet says empty country towards hunger, the poet is referring to the poverty of the people of Urisa uh, and the utter uh, destitution of uh, the people. So uh, we have actually, uh, he has created uh, uh, the atmosphere, the tone, the mood of the poem in the first uh, uh, three lines. Uh, now coming to uh, next stanza. White clad widowed women past the centers of their lives are waiting to enter the great temple. What other image is there? What other picture is there um, just at that coastal area? The poet finds women, widowed women. Women who are made widow, in white, clad, clad, dressed. They are wearing the white dress. In Indian uh, uh, culture, widows always wear uh, white dress. And this white is a symbol of uh, purity, symbol of calmness. Past the centers of their lives. Now they have these women have passed the prime of their life. This is this can be the meaning of center, the prime uh, time of their life. They have passed, or center may be uh, the husband. That uh, husband is no more with them are waiting to enter the great temple. They are, they are waiting outside the temple to, 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 to go and take the blessings of God for their, um, uh, you know, health, for their um, calmness, for their tranquility. Now, uh, you see, as I have just told you that uh, in Hindu religion, uh, widow women are, uh, uh, they, they wear, white dress uh, and uh, that is after the death of their you know, husbands uh, they uh, give up the worldly desires and uh, sexual pleasures now uh, 
you see uh, if the word widowed uh, women uh, is is used so widowed women again uh, gives the patriarchal uh, meaning women who uh, were made widow so we have the uh, you know patriarchal uh, tone uh, here and again if uh, we derive uh, the meaning of the center as the husbands again we have the uh, you know patriarchal uh, touch uh, here because you know uh, the poet is trying to show that without the center without the husband they the, the life has no significance for these these women now uh, uh, are waiting to enter the great temple that they are just uh, uh, waiting to go inside the temple and get the blessings of God uh, so that they may lead uh, a peaceful life. Now, uh, in uh, third stanza, their austere eyes stare like those caught in a net hanging by the dawn's of shining strands of faith. Austere eyes, their austere eyes, austere, here uh, the meaning of austere may be uh, the eyes of these women uh, show that they have no desires at all after the death of their husbands. So austere eyes mean desireless eyes uh, and uh, they are compared with those animals who are caught in a net, who are restricted within the net or the prison or the cage and have no desires at all. Now, uh, uh, again, uh, net, uh, the word net can be uh, the patriarchal system of the society. Uh, you know, like a trapped uh, animal, they have uh, lost, these women have lost the, uh, the, the freedom of their mind and uh, body. And when they are uh, standing out to the temple, they are hopeful uh, to get the blessings of God for uh, the peaceful life. Uh, now, coming to next stanza, that is stanza 4. Uh, now, uh, the frail early light catches ruined, leprous shells leaning against one another, a mass of crowded faces without names. Now, the, this uh, frail early light is actually uh, the dim light of the early morning, the dawn the reference of the title of the poem here. So this frail early light catches in the, in, in, in the dim light of the morning, the poet finds uh, ruined and leprous shells. What are these uh, uh, leprous shells, ruined leprous shells? Uh, this is for the lepers. Again, I am connecting the third line also with this a mass of crowded faces without uh, names. Now, uh, crowded faces and the leprous shells, these words are used for those beggars, those poor people who are uh, sitting or standing outside the temple in the hope that the pilgrims will come and give them some uh, money. Crowds to faces, I mean these uh, uh, people whose upper part is almost bent and they are without names. So again, uh, anonymity, loss of identity is, uh, is, is there uh, here in this line. So that this uh, early light of uh, uh, Puri, the poet, uh, you know, finds many beggars, poor people, lepers, crowded faces, and they are without the names. And they are assembled there 
and they think that the pilgrims will come outside and give them some some money again the poet is trying to deal with the theme of poverty starvation destitution here in this stanza there are so many i i told you in my introductory lecture the theme of poverty starvation destitution is very prominent theme which the poet deals in most of his poems hunger for example i told you uh, deals with the same kind of poem grandfather which is though it deals with the religious conversion but this has also uh, one way or the other the same kind of theme uh, i'll discuss it uh, uh, later now uh, in stanza 5 and suddenly breaks out my hide into the smoky blaze of a sullen solitary pyre that fills my aging mother now suddenly breaks out from my hide that actually some uh, you know some thought is springs out of his mind when the poet looks at the smoky blaze which is coming from a pyre pyre is actually the funeral A solitary pyre is only one funeral uh, pyre which was burning uh, there, and the smoke was coming uh, out. Sullen is uh, dull, morose. Now, uh, you know, you see, and suddenly breaks out my mind. Suddenly, one thought springs out my. Uh, Uh, mind, uh, you know, the poet tries to say, as I actually sprang out from my womb, uh, from the womb of my, you know, mother. Uh, now, uh, this he, he uh, this reminds him the last wish of his mother when he, uh, I mean, sees that uh, the solitary uh, pyre. Now, the last tense, our last wish to be cremated here. twisting uncertainly like light on the shifting sands you can uh, relate the last two lines with the lines of the previous stanza he uh, remind he is reminded of the last wish of uh, her mother to be cremated at this you know particular place so uh, i mean uh, Uh, the realization you know occurs to him all of a sudden so this dawn actually the symbol of dawn is thus also the realization of the of the poet uh, so in, in in the entire poem dawn at puri the poet describes uh, i mean theme of uh, uh, you know poverty hunger by describing uh, Uh, you know the the last wish of the poet's mother to be cremated at this uh, particular place